Hello and welcome to my duet recap and review of tonight's episode, July 12th, 2010. So, apparently this is the finale and the voting result, results, result in the winner for next week. I did not know that because I thought it was going to be a top two thing, but I guess not, it's going to be a top three thing. So, the show ends next week. Thank the Lord. I mean, it was a good filler to watch over the summer, but... Eh, it's nothing compared to, like, Idol or X Factor. I mean, it pretty much was intended to be a filler for people who like um, singing competition shows. And I wasn't really expecting anything spectacular out of it. So, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed it some days. I was like, oh, do I really have to watch it? Other days, I was like, yeah, okay, I have something to watch. But um, it was an okay show. So, it's almost over. So, yay. Show the show. The, bleh. So the show starts off with a celeb opening number with all four of them. Um, Kelly Clarkson is on her feet, but she is still limping a little bit. But um, good for her. She's a uh, healing. Um, they sing "Get Ready Here I Come." I think that's the title of the song. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, this was okay. Um, not my favorite superstar number, but I still think it was really good. So, so. Something that's new this week is the finalists will be seeing a solo along with their duet, which I was so happy for when they said that. When um, Quidu said that, I was like, yes, I'm so happy. Um, you know, you can actually see them perform, unlike, you know, being uh, stuck next to their partner. So I was excited. So first we had the results. Um, Jerome and Jason are safe, and then John and Bridget are in the bottom and Bridget is eliminated. No surprise there, just as I predicted. So, let's just get on with it then. Um, first up, we had Jay Roman Jennifer. His solo song for the evening will be Zion Still Deliver. When I first heard this, I was like, really? I think it's going to be a little bit too karaoke. But I'll talk about it later, and I'll tell you why it wasn't. So, the duet is Break Even by the script, and I don't really think it fits him. Um, for a final duet, in the competition, I don't think it was a powerful enough song, and it just wasn't in J-Rome's lane um, the kind of music he would put out in, in his future re record. I don't think it, I don't think it fit either of their voices, not even Jennifer's. Um, and Jennifer can sing almost anything, that didn't really fit. I just don't think the song fit her voice very well. I don't know if maybe it, if it was the range or if it just was a song. I don't know. I just kind of found it kind of really boring, to be honest. I didn't really enjoy it, and it, it was one of my least favorite J. Rowan's performances. But I do think that they had great chemistry. Um, But at the same time, you know, they've had great chemistry the whole competition. So at this point, it's kind of like, what's the big deal? What what did he bring new? It was just kind of an average performance. Um, The judges said that they like how he went out of the box and did something different. But at the same time, it's the last show. He should do something in his lane. But his solo song showed that, so I'll get to that later. And next, we had Jason Farrell and Kelly Clarkson singing Me and Mrs. Jones. He sang this um, during week three in his Sing for Your Life round when he was in the bottom two, which it saved him from elimination. Um, I think um, that having both of them sit down helped both of them really connect well and helped him connect with Kelly a lot more, you know, because he didn't have to move around and he just sit there and soak it all in and connect. Um, it was great vocals, great connection. I think this was his best performance ever. I mean, it wasn't the most powerful vocal performance. Like, I do agree with John Legend a little when he said it wasn't the best song because it's kind of laid back. It's not a huge powerhouse vocal. But, you know, I didn't really care, and I loved it. I just thought, you know, from where he was from the first week in the competition to where he is now, it's just... Amazing, and I really like Jason's voice. It's different, and it's a different sound. Um, I actually, I actually really do think he has a shot of winning, even though he is the underdog. I really do. Um, I think he's going to get the popular vote, so you never know what happens. So next, we had John Glosson and Jennifer Nettle singing the prayer. I sadly just don't know about this one. You know, on paper, this sounds amazing and fantastic. And I really wanted to like this, but it just kind of felt boring. I just, I think it's a song. And it's something that I wouldn't put on my iPod. So I think that's kind of what it was. But, I mean, it was sung great, so I just don't really know what the problem was. It was just something, 
something about it that I just I didn't like. I don't know, just I just felt bored. Um, but there, you know, there's no denying that John has an amazing voice. Um, you know, I really don't want to bring Idol into this American Idol, but Idol fans know that Jessica Sanchez's cover was amazing, and it's still fresh in my mind, and it was just a great, fantastic moment for her, and I just feel like her cover was more powerful and effective for me, and it just really hurts me to say that this wasn't my favorite John performance, which is sad, because it is the final, you know, duet performance for him to show to America. So on to the solos. J. Rome sings Sign Still Delivered, and it wasn't as karaoke as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, it wasn't his best performance, but it was still really great. Um, he went up and he he went, went and sang Kelly and Jennifer. He had great stage presence. He had great, you know, timing, great camera timing. You know, performing, you know, I wouldn't know. I've never performed on TV, but performing on TV is completely different than just performing on a stage. Um, you know, you have to look into the camera, make sure you pay attention to which camera is going. Um, it's a lot It's a lot more to think about than just performing on stage in front of an audience. So I think he did a really good job with, um, you know, getting the camera blocking and all that, and he really connected, and I thought it was great. So after that, we had John Glosson singing Bless the Broken Road by, um, what's it, Rascal Flats. I mean, I could definitely see John having, like, a sundry... What did I say? Sundry? <laughs> Country? Soul? Kind of contemporary kind of album? Um, you know, I, I enjoy this a lot more than I thought I would, and I liked it a lot more than the duet. Um, I, I really felt this song, and it felt like his song, and it felt like he could have had a hit with this kind of song. You know, I really liked it. Um, great, I liked it. A lot better than the duet. And then we had Jason Farrell singing Runaway Baby by Bruno Mars. Um, you could tell he was a little nervous at first to have to have the stage to himself, but, you know, he really held his own, and halfway through, he just kind of, you know, let it all go. Um, you know, the song, it doesn't really show off his vocal ability that much, but it really showed off his fun side, which is something that I think he's going to need um, when he has a concert by himself someday, you know? You need to have great stage presence, and you need to, you know, you can have those songs where you just, you know, sit down and sing, but, but at a concert, you always have to have the crazy songs where you're running around the stage and, you know, just going crazy, because people love that stuff. I love that stuff. I love when I go to concerts and, and um, you know, they sing a real rocking song and they're just going crazy and whipping their hair everywhere. I love those kind of songs. So this definitely showed that. Um, you know, he was still, you know, a little stiff in the body as well, but, you know, I still enjoyed it. Um, you know, he's such a great underdog that I really think that he could have a chance of throwing either John or J-Rome, even though I think John and J-Rome were the favorites to win. So, who will I be voting for? I won't tell you until next week. I want you all to guess who you think I think I should win. Um, yeah. Um, I, that's, I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't want to say anymore because I might give away hints and I don't want to do that. So, follow me on Twitter at Fan. There will be a link in the description. I tweet a lot and um, I love chatting, so follow me. And then, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of the show. Who do you think is going to win? Um, yeah, who do you think is going to win, and who do you think I think is going to win, or who I want to win? All right, and then right over there, and sub up there. All right, thank you all for watching, and then next week, we find out who the winner of duets is. I'm very excited. I'm excited for the show to be over, because I'm getting sick of it, and I'm getting sick of reviewing it, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. It's, it's not like Idol. You know, Idol, I've watched Idol for years, and it's just... It's like it's like a hobby to watch Idol at this point in my life, <laughs> which is kind of sad to say. You know, people ask, "What is your hobbies?" and I say, "Oh, my hobby is watching American Idol." But you know, I, I would say it's it is a hobby. So, um, yeah, you know, it's not it's nothing like American Idol, but you know, I love I love singing. I love hearing people sing. So it was a good filler show. All right, see you all next week. Bye.